Are you counting or I'm counting? Uh, I'm not counting. I can't count to ten. <laughs> At least you say it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, hello. Welcome to episode 17 of uh, our Over the Limit podcast. Um, we finally managed to get our next guest. Our next guest date in the calendar. Uh, nobody less than uh, René Rast is joining us today. Uh, winner of 24 Hours of Nürburgring, 24 Hours of Spa, two times I think even. Three times ZTM champion, uh, three times Porsche Super Cup, um, and much more. So um, not a too bad CV, I would say. No, yeah. it's uh, it's not too shabby. Yeah? So uh, welcome, René. It's a pleasure to to have you. Thanks a lot, guys. It's uh, it's also a pleasure on my side. Finally, to be on the on the podcast. Obviously, I've I've seen some of them, not all of them, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's an honor to be there now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we have a lot of. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, we started this pretty much just for fun, but we were talking about it yesterday. On yeah. uh, everybody keeps talking about us for the, who's next and when's the next podcast. And even on, <laughs> I said to Laurent on iRacing, people say like, "Oh, when it's amazing. When is the next one?" So yeah. we have to put a bit more effort our into it in the daily life. Yeah, you're a big thing now on the internet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're getting famous well, on it. <laughs> Can uh, start a second career. <laughs> So René, we'll, uh, like with every guest, um, we'll go through a bit of your career, um, see how you started, how you went, what your future dreams are. Uh, and then the second part is a bit uh, the gossip part, which everybody will be waiting cool. for, I think. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Dries will ask those I'm questions. I'm out of this. I'm out of this. <laughs> So um, explain us a bit your, because um, you had a, let's say, a slightly different uh, than than standard or yeah, what is standard start of your career. Mm -hmm. um, explain us a bit how it went, because you started in, in, in go-karts, but a little bit late, I think, if I remember, or? No, I, I didn't start too late. Actually, uh, my family is, is not a racing family, so we have no racing background whatsoever. Um, I, as a kid, I always kind of liked speed. My, my dad was always going uh, very fast uh, with his uh, Mercedes back in the days on the, on the highway. <laughs> and I kind of always kind of liked it. And uh, when I was five, six years old, I actually um, somehow I got a I got a motocross bike. Okay. And um, I went uh, through the bushes, through the forest with this motocross bike. And I just loved the speed. And then I went to friends which had quads and stuff like that. Um, so I was always fascinated by the, the, the thrill of the speed somehow. And then somehow my, my dad, my uncle decided to go with me to, to go-karts indoor track. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically that's where, where it all kicked off, basically. Um, I started my, my first race actually with my dad, with my uncle together. We, we did a, like a two-hour race in a, in a go-kart together in an indoor car track when I was six, seven years old, something like that. Okay. And that's how I, how it all kicked off. So yeah, no, no background basically from, from the family, just, uh, just because I love the speed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you, after your go-karting career, you did a couple of years in formal racing, right? From BMW or? Yeah. So then I did uh, obviously a couple of years in, in go-karts from 1994, I would say till 2000, I did uh, go-karts. And then uh, two years of Formula BMW, so the smallest uh, category in, in Formula cars. Um, well, it was quite big back then, huh? It was big back then, yeah, because um, you got also sponsor. I got sponsorship from BMW, so um, there was kind of a shootout when they choose, like, I think 10 drivers back in the days. Yeah. And you got, I don't know how much money, but we got, like, half of the season, we got finals from BMW. Okay. So I was a kind of BMW junior. So I did two years of that to basically rerun, run out of money uh, because it was just too, too expensive. And I had two big crashes in my second year, um, which then forced us to retire halfway through the season. So we stopped okay. uh, after halfway through mm. the season. And then, yeah, it was basically kind of over in my formula, formula career, let's say. Yeah. Yeah, that's always difficult. It's, yeah. It's part, the financial side. <laughs> but back then it was nice. So like when you said, they, you could have a chance to uh, get a 50-50 finance. Like also back in the day, you could do the former runner 2.0 and then you could, if you win that championship, you could get a, I don't know if it was a free entry or half uh, entry to the 3.5. 
So it was always a nice yeah. way of, of getting some budget, but nowadays I don't think this I even think exists yeah, anymore. They're not doing that so much anymore, these junior no. scholarship no. Uh, things. No. No. But also the prices are much different, right? In the past, yeah. maybe, I don't know, Formula BMW was, the budget was around, I would say, 200, 250 maximum. Now, if you go oh, for, I think Formula 4 is probably the, the, the earliest you can do. It's you probably get it. already at like half a million or something, right? Just yeah, the, the tires, I think you pay yeah. 200. The budget, what you just said, is what yeah. they pay nowadays in go-karts. Yeah, this I is hear. true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. It's, crazy. Good. it's, it's 20 years ago, right? But uh, yeah. it's, still, it's still crazy. Yeah, but this, uh, yeah. I, I spoke with somebody, who was it? Formula 4 was 500, 600. That's crazy, huh? You pay, it was Formula 3 back in then when you did Formula, uh, yeah, well, yeah. as close to. It's crazy how it goes. And that's why when you uh, when you have kids nowadays, you think about it twice before you even think about buying a go-kart because... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my theory is crazy, when, you, yeah. when, you, when you once started... You know, if they are kind of good, you will have to continue it. So, if unless you have yeah. the whole financial or a big part of the financial investment already available, what's the sense of starting yeah. it? I mean, yeah, you can always find sponsors and it's on the way, but yeah, you know how it works. So. Yeah, but unless you I'm, know I'm that. I'm lucky on that side. Yeah. Unless you know I'm, that. I'm uh, lucky. Huh? Yeah. Continue, please. Unless that you, you you know that like you have a new world champion driving on the in the go kart, then as long as you're not sure, then mm, yeah. maybe I would say, Even then. I love you a lot, but maybe let's try <laughs> tennis. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say I'm I'm lucky on that side because my my oldest son is seven now, and he's not ah, yeah, racing at all. No, um, so no, he doesn't really care about racing. Um, he's he's kind of afraid and. No, he doesn't want it. Maybe it changes, but yeah. uh, so far I'm very lucky. This is actually <laughs> very, very lucky. I started when I was 12, so you still have some. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah? Some time, yeah? Only when I, you were 12? Yeah, proper. Oh. You, Dries? Well, I actually never did go-karts properly. Never started. <laughs> I, I did. Never started. And <laughs> I started go-karts when I was eight or nine, and then I had a big crash once, so I stopped a bit. But, like, racing-wise... I always tell my dad. I said I was doing more laps in gang. I think I knew gang better than everybody else. But I just never did. I never did proper racing. At the yeah, end, you, I did. I remember I was trying to help you, and my dad, and my my dad and me were laughing because on the straight you were looking up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> he was bored. He was looking at the birds. <laughs> it's uh, actually very true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's how it goes, huh? Okay. But then from Formula BMW, you. Uh, yeah, that then uh, came to to uh, to an end. Then you'd made a switch to Polo Cup, right? Yeah. That was a yeah. Then I did uh, a yeah, different exactly. way. I did. Oh man, uh, when I was driving <laughs> Formula BMW, um, I said I will never do Polo Cup. Please don't <laughs> don't make me do Polo Cup. Please, please not. <laughs> but I knew it was coming because we had no money for uh, Formula Three. Uh, Formula 3 was double the budget or more than mm -hmm. um, Formula BMW. <clears throat> so I knew that either I stop uh, after Formula BMW or I do something else. And I did Polo Cup instead, which was, I don't know, way, way less money, um, which was in the end the right choice because I won the championship in, in, in that first year, which then promoted me to the next championship was then Seat Cup and then Porsche Cup and then blah, 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 blah. Whatever came after was basically based on my first year in, in Polo Cup. If I wouldn't, or if we wouldn't have took, taken the decision to go to touring cars, I wouldn't have had the career which I had now. So in the end, it was a right choice. But uh, back in the days, I can tell you when, when <laughs> let's say Sebastian Vettel, you know, he was with me yeah. for two years at Formula BMW. He was winning the championship and I spent my whole karting career with him. So he went to Formula 3 and I went from, from Formula BMW <laughs> to Polo Cup. <laughs> <laughs> he actually in the same year I think he did his Formula 1 de debut or whatever I don't know he was Formula 1 test reserve driver and I was in Polo Cup I was like what, <laughs> what am I actually doing here so it was it was a it was a tough year but uh, it was worth it yeah but like, I can understand it from that point of view but, but I often use you as an example that for you don't necessarily to be a professional race car driver and be successful I mean the way you are 
Uh, you don't necessarily need to uh, do all the... Okay, you did go-karting, but do the World Championship go-karts and then do all the Formula single-seaters. No. Um, if, you know, if you're talented, uh, you can also start the way the way you did. In the end, I think it worked out pretty well. I don't think you can complain, but obviously, yeah, if you compare no, yourself no, to Vettel, then... <laughs> <laughs> something different but yeah but uh yeah yeah he he was on a different level back yeah, yeah. in the days already you could see it uh he was he was outstanding and in, in his formula days so uh f he, he deserved that uh, way more than i did in, in back in the days yeah but how did you how did you came to the idea of polo cup uh, there, there was no alternative no you know the polo cup was um also a support pro port championship of the dtm and yeah there was no other alternative um so we were always racing with the formula bmw we were, we were always in the support program of dtm and the polo cup and because we saw the polo cup uh, we said okay pff, there's no alternative back yeah. in the days you didn't have like 10 different kind of championships you only had one or two if you were lucky so the polo cup was the next the next thing which we could afford actually in terms of budget because the uh, career cup we couldn't afford Seat cup we couldn't afford so it was just a uh, polo cup which was available for me unfortunately or well, not unfortunately but back in the day it was, yeah. it was like that but even that something like that doesn't exist anymore and no. now you start in what's the lowest you can start is gt4 well it still exists like because yeah. kelvin and sheldon funnelin they both did polo yeah, cup but, but it's in south africa but, but yeah but i mean now in europe, in europe germany probably you have the uh, bmw m2 cup which is like, oh, yeah. like sure. a rookie championship gt4 is kind of you know, a beginner's championship, but yeah, um, probably there's not much more than that actually right now. Yeah. But also, as you said that, uh, I mean, for sure that how Rennie did it uh, as an example of not having to do all, a lot of uh, karting and driving to have a, a successful career. Um, but I think nowadays it's also difficult to compare because the budgets are anyway are much higher for, for, for people to, so to, to start in GT4, I think the budget is already a lot yeah. to 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 jump in yeah, I mean, and you need to drive <clears throat> yeah i mean motorsport yeah. is always a question about budget but i was said from for example with my daughter i mean she used to be really uh, into cars now she's more into horses not necessarily cheaper mm. <laughs> but uh, exactly so expensive <laughs> yeah but um i mean i'm like let her do her let her do her thing let her yeah. go to school and then if she's 16 and she wants to start Racing, for example, you mean it doesn't mean you can't. No, no, no. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, there's not one way to. Yeah. Of course, if you want to be a Formula One world champion, yeah, there's only one way. But then you need to start like now when you're yeah. four years old and spend every penny you have, yeah. and that's not gonna happen. But it feels like <laughs> this this time of uh, of the of the racing world, it's even more difficult to become a professional racing driver. It feels like because you have yeah. so much kind of alternatives and so many different championships and mm. so many different drivers and manufacturers it's kind of it's so difficult it feels like to to actually start as a as a as a young driver and then actually become factory driver it feels like almost impossible these yeah. days yeah. i don't know if, if, why it has changed but it's it's so much more it feels it's so much more difficult for the young drivers to to become professional than it was in the past somehow when did you become yeah. professional? Because you were afterwards, you went to Carrera Cup and Super Cup, which you were very successful and spent a lot of the years. Yeah. And uh, then you actually, funny enough, switched to Audi because everybody was expecting you to become a Porsche factory driver, but you switched to to Audi. Was that the the, the phase where you also started to become professional, or I guess you were already earning a bit of money in, in Super Cup as well? Yes, I was I was earning already money in I think 2008, my second year in, in Career Cup or first year in Super Cup, I cannot remember. So this was the first date where I was li earning little money. Already in Seat Cup, actually, I earned some prize money and okay. stuff like that. Um, but the first proper factory deal came in 2012 with, with, with Audi then. Yeah. Um, so this was the first, first contract with the manufacturer before I only had... Um, yeah, contracts with private teams, Porsche Cup teams, and I was—I mean, I was earning decent money. As as everybody knows, uh, end of end of Super Cup year when you won the championship, you got a uh, you got a road car as yeah. a present from from Porsche. So I won it three times, so I got three times uh, a road car, a 911 GTS or Turbo S on a Turbo. It wasn't normal Carrera S, but already that was 
you know, for yeah. uh, for somebody who was who old was I? Twenty five, mid my mid twenties. Uh, I had three Porsches, uh, right? So this was already kind <laughs> of uh, kind of a nice thing. <laughs> and how come you yeah. didn't? Because there's a story I think behind it. How come you didn't join Porsche at that moment? I cannot actually tell you because I don't know. Um, I have I've never talked to anybody who was responsible back in the days. Um, why I never became factory driver at Porsche. I tried many many years, obviously, because I you know it was logical yeah. um, to to win to win the Career Cup, to win Super Cup, and then become factory driver. Three times, um, I actually. And we, <laughs> yeah, and we tried. I tried to become factory driver, but there was either they didn't like me or um they were full with factory drives i cannot really tell you um but yeah it was there was no there was no open door for me there unfortunately there was actually a press release of uh, mantai saying that i'm racing for them in in the gt open um yeah. so this was basically um i think that nobody knows actually the story mantai put a because i was i was talking to olaf mantai and um his team and he wanted to do GT Open in 2012, I think it was. And um, I was like, yeah, I was actually quite keen to do it, but my management wasn't. And I basically kind of said to Olaf, yes, I want to do it. And then Olaf put a put a press release out that I'm doing GT Open with Mantai and Marco Holzer. But I haven't signed anything. I just said, yeah, I want to do it, but I, I haven't I haven't signed anything. But the press release was was already out, and uh, everybody actually thought I was a Porsche factory driver finally. And then, uh, yeah, actually, uh, we had to yeah pull the plug and said no, 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 we 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 cannot do that because we already have signed a contract with Audi. Yeah. So then I went I went to Audi in in that year, and my seat actually, you know who it was who got my seat then? No. Nick T Nick Tendi. Oh yeah. That's yeah. how Nick Tendi uh, joined joined Porsche. Okay. Basically. Uh, that's that's yeah. why oh, so he did I that race. I don't then. want to do it. Nick then did the whole championship instead ah. of me with Marco Holzer. I think it was. That's how basically Nick got. Uh, it wasn't a factory deal, but he got his first uh, taste of uh, kind of a factory deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how it goes in the end. Though. Small things. It's crazy, yeah. But yeah. Uh, what I want to ask because you said that you did the Polo Cup, then the Seat Cup, and then the Career Cup, but it's all. Is it the same thing like the BMW stuff that it's all a Volkswagen Group thing that you got? Could you that you could climb the ladder like that, or was it all different? No, it was was all different. Mm. Um, it was all run by by private teams. So the Seat Cup was run by private teams and the Porsche as well. So there was no no support from from Seat or from from Porsche. Um, we we had to kind of uh, finance finance it by our own. Um, and as I said, I think second year already, I got the full, full, uh, yeah, the full years paid by by the teams, and I also got money already. So, hmm. um, yeah, it's it's. But there was there was no backing from from anybody f beforehand. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, you drove, or we drove, a couple of years together at Audi, uh, which will go mm -hmm. more in detail after. <laughs> um, <laughs> then you were obviously. What happened? Oh, nothing. Uh, <laughs> quite successful uh, in DTM. Uh, you did Formula E, you did Le Mans. Um, in the end, the last couple of years, I think you did a lot of different high-level championships. Um, what's What's been the favorite one? What's been, obviously, you've been very successful in DTM, but is that your favorite one or you prefer Le Mans, Formula E? Pa, difficult question. I think DTM is still my favorite, yeah. obviously, as... Uh, that, that's the championship where I was the most successful in, but also because I always wanted to be a DTM driver as, as far as I can remember, because I did, probably did the BMW, Formula BMW championship, because I did Polo Cup, Seat Cup, Porsche Cup. They were all kind of support championships of the yeah. DTM. And that's why I think I always wanted to be a DTM driver. This was always my, my big target, my big goal. I think that's why, uh, yeah, it's my favorite championship, but also because I just love the way they worked in the past, you know, with, with factory support, with the kind of cars they had. It was actually quite, quite cool. I also like uh, WC a lot. I like, I like IMSA a lot. So these kind of championships races are, are quite nice. Formal E is a different uh, style of racing, um, which certain things I like and certain things I don't like. Um, 
but for sure if it comes to to enjoying racing and having fun in a race car i think the class one dtm cars um and the lmp1 cars were probably the best cars i've i've driven back in the days yeah, yeah. so would you, if you had to choose would you choose more sprint type of racing or endurance uh probably sprint probably sprint because it's shorter <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just uh i don't know it's it's i also like endurance racing because it's just a different type of racing right yeah. um you have to share the car with two or three other drivers um it's a different philosophy in terms of working and in all the the i don't know the mental approach is very different to to a sprint sprint race it always feels like in the sprint race there's more pressure you're more f you, you're more on the focus um and yeah you have to deliver kind of alone which is always different but um yeah I don't know. I, I like both. Um, it's not like I like the one more than the other, but you know, there are, there are good, good years and bad years. I, I had good years in sprint. I had bad years in sprint and the other way in endurance as well. So it's, yeah. it's difficult. difficult to I also find this quite difficult to have these two different mentalities on, well, I did not do any, uh, DTM season or a season where you're driving by yourself because uh, in the last years I've, own, I've always driven with two or three uh, or let's say one or two other teammates but the mindset you have to get when you do when you drive by yourself it's so different and I, I personally maybe it's because I didn't use it for so long or didn't have to do it for so long that I don't mm. really personally like it um because I did one or two, no, I did one uh, DTM race for Rene, and it was absolutely sh <laughs> bad. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> it was really bad. Um, but I also, I don't know, I, I missed the feeling that I could, you know, have a laugh with mm. my teammate. I, because I, I, I mean, I get along very well with Sheldon, so we had a laugh, but at the end, you're racing against each yeah. other, so it's different. And uh, I personally, yeah. but at the end now, I was, uh, I was again in Red Bull Ring, and I was maybe, you know... Uh, if, if they asked me to do DTM, I always said <laughs> no, that I did never want to do it. But maybe if I, you know, I would like to know if uh, if I if I'm able because I if you're as bad as me, you're better. <laughs> well, this is <laughs> I yeah. mean, if I'm that, that bad, then uh, yeah, I stop. <laughs> <laughs> would you come back to DTM, Lawrence? No. Did you not enjoy? <laughs> no. Ah, I mean, yeah, for sure it was. <coughs> one of the worst years I think I've did in the last <laughs> 10 years but I mean there's there's more to that than than, than, than yeah, yeah. a lot of standard stuff but it also made me realize about this question that I and, then, and I guess it's what you're used to I think the last huh, so many years I was really focused on, on on endurance and not doing not not even doing sprint races anymore. Mm. Um, I mean, I was always doing IMSA WEC, and and you just the mindset is is quite different in terms of you work with your teammates. Yeah. Qualifying is not important. Uh, you save your tires, you save fuels, but strategy. Whereas in you know things yeah. like DTM, it's completely the opposite. It's all about qualifying. Uh, there is mm -hmm. pretty to none strategy or saving tires. Uh, I mean, depends where you go, but yeah. and. Um, I think it's a bit what you're, what you're used to or yeah. accustomed, and but like you said, I also prefer to. And I think that's more. Let's say maybe more my, not call it strength, but I'm better at working together with 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 others and collectively, you know, making mm. something good than, than doing it on my own. I think, but yeah. It's, it's always, yeah, if I would have been good last year, I would have probably said something else. So it's always where you are, exactly. where you win races or not. So. Exactly. But, exactly. Yeah. I see. But you, I mean, you won already a, a lot of races and uh, I mean, three time DTM champion. What are your future goals still you want to achieve? Uh, because for sure there are still, I mean, we always want to keep winning and going. Yeah, I mean, I, I achieved already much more than I've ever, if I ever wanted, if, if that's, uh, if that makes sense, because as I said, I wanted to become DTN driver. That's all I wanted. And, uh, I, I won the tra championship three times. Um, so it, all my, all my goals were, were achieved more or less with that. Mm. 
now you can obviously say, yeah, but you haven't done, you haven't won Le Mans overall, you haven't won Daytona overall. Yes, it's nice. I, obviously, I would like to win it, to to have all those four races. I think like Lawrence wants to have, but uh, it's just just the the little cherry on top of the cake, the very little cherry. I'm I can I can stop my career now today, and I can say I'm more than happy with what I have done, what I have achieved, and I don't need more. So that's I think that's very nice uh, because many drivers they they don't have that. Um, if I see or if I look back to to some old old racing drivers who have retired, they kind of chase all all still these these achievements. They yeah. still want to be up in the media. They still want to be seen yeah. as the the race driver. And uh, and I I feel I can, could retire now and I could just disappear and uh, could never be in the paddock again. So um, you know I think that's so it's also an achievement to 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 feel like that. Yeah, that sure. uh, you have already achieved more than you wanted, but uh, yeah, Le Mans 24 Le Mans and 24 Daytona overall would be nice, um, and that's hopefully happening soon next couple of years. But if not, again, I'm I'm very happy. Uh, so uh, hopefully you will have the yeah. chance in the future with. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you've always, I mean, maybe you can explain a little bit. You've been, I think you're known as a, as a hard worker, somebody who spends a lot of time at the track, uh, who leaves late, um, who prepares a lot, although you pretend not to, <laughs> but <laughs> not, oh, not in the past anyway. <laughs> So I mean, what is that a strength of you? I think I mean I think it is. You know that you're that you're hard work and you go into detail. And I think that stuff is necessary to be successful in things like DTM because it come up it comes into yeah. a lot of details. I think you surpassed me from what I heard from other drivers and uh, oh, yeah? engineers and team team bosses. I think you 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 overtook me in that uh, category. I, I think know. you're also kind of uh, working hard and in, in lots of details. But yeah, I think that's. They're, they're different drivers, right? I think Dries is a different driver than me. Um, a little bit, maybe. <laughs> yeah, Sheldon is different than Kelvin. So there are lots of uh, yeah. different characters and different uh, drivers who... Uh, Rob, let's say, let's talk to about Robin. Robin, for example. If you talk to him, he tells you, if I see the apex, I'm fast. Because I just, just look at the apex and I know where to break. And when he doesn't see the apex, he, he sucks. And um, he just drives by feeling somehow, uh. while I I drive by by boards, markers. I have references everywhere. Uh. And um, I'm not sure how you are, but they're they're yeah, some probably of... different, yeah, different uh, two t different types of drivers, right? The natural drivers like Robin and some other drivers, and me and you, who are more analytic drivers. And um, if if you're if you are an analytic driver. Think you 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 get better from session to session and from from lap by lap by just learning more and just fine tuning every little detail you drive on your on your own driving, and then we jump out we look at the data we see where we we are not good uh, and then next session we go out again and just do it better than what we saw on the data before so we always make 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 steps throughout yeah. the the weekend while other drivers natural drivers like Robin. Probably his fastest lap is the first lap of the weekend. Yeah, this is a lot uh, of times the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you just he stays there or, or gets worse. Um, yeah, it's just a different approach, I would say, right? Yeah. And uh, I think to to maximize our performance, yours and mine, we need to work hard on, on the laptop. We need to dig into data, into videos, and try to maximize our own package. Not even the car. Um, it's more our own package which we try to improve and. I think that was my success definitely in, in DTM because we had six to eight cars, Audi cars, mm. and I got six or eight data sets. So yeah. when I saw that somebody is qu quicker in turn one, I took his approach. If somebody was quicker in turn two, I took the approach of the other drivers. And then I just built my my perfect lap together. And then all of a sudden in qualify, I was three to four tenths quicker than all the other drivers just because I took uh, the best things of every driver and put it together in my lap. Uh, which is which sounds easy, but in the end, it's obviously 
one thing to to understand it but the next thing is also to to, to do it on the track yeah, right it's, that's uh, a difficult it's, part it's, it's, yeah but that Rene yeah. is uh, it, that's where i mean for sure you, you i mean <laughs> it would be stupid to say yeah but you can't drive you just do it on the thing which is <laughs> would be stupid because you clearly can can drive but that's also i think the talent that he has to because a lot of drivers can look at data and then they say, oh, yeah, I understand, I know what to do, mm. but then don't know how to do it. Yeah. And this... It's it's in general, I think it's, it's, first of all, it's funny how, especially, like, best example is you and me brothers can be so different in the way you approach it. Um, but in general, drivers, but it's... Yeah, I think the hard working way is, is, is obviously definitely yeah, the harder sure. way because... One, you it's, it requires a lot of effort and time. And two, I always feel that there's a very fine margin between working hard and making yourself crazy. And I'm, I'm yeah. always asking myself the question from, yeah, should I look more or should I just now close the damn thing and just drive tomorrow like some others do? It's like the healthy mix in between always always works best. Yeah. But when, you know, when you're struggling a bit, you, you tend to look more and, and yeah. potentially make yourself crazy whereas you have an easy life go get an ice cream and you drive the next <laughs> day but <laughs> but in the end i think i always believe that uh, the hard working part eventually wins i mean that's yeah. my mindset because yeah because if you look i mean yeah yeah we're, we're talking about robin for sure i mean talking about natural drivers i think he's one of the i mean in my circle i know uh, but yeah, if you look, like Renny said, at the end, also working hard and looking, they were racing together in TTM. At the end, yeah, it, it yeah. comes out on top if you if you don't if you. But also, if you don't work for it, normally, nothing comes granted in life, so you have to work wow. for it. You just said that. I, yeah, I feel <laughs> very I, I think of that. <laughs> <laughs> the hardworking driver can can have an edge about the non-working driver if if the conditions are stable. Let's say you have a weekend which is sunny and every day is the same weather. I think the hardworking driver can really outperform the non mm. non hardworking driver, but then once it comes to a tricky weekend where the where the weather is changing and where the conditions conditions are changing, I think then the natural driver has actually yeah. not an edge but has a good chance to to outperform the other driver. You see it many times when when Robin jumps in the car and it gets difficult. Uh, last year in Spa and WC, he was leading uh, the field in the LMP2 class. He was pulling away of the Toyotas. In a LB2 car, right? Um, you know these conditions. When when I I would be lost probably. I would try to break later the next lap than I did the lap before, and you know I would I would work my way up to the limit. Yeah. While Robin is over the limit and then comes a little bit back. Yeah. And um, I think the the natural driver has an edge over us when it comes to tricky conditions, and yeah. they take probably also more risks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny. It's a, it's an interesting topic to. Uh, yeah. It's to it's. Compare. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So let's come to the the gossip part. Shall I ask the questions, or oh, yeah. I mean, not that you? No, no, you can go. I mean, b bit of it's background information. Renee and myself were teammates at WRT at Audi from 2000, yeah, thir 13 in the end. Really? Yeah, 13, 14, 13, and yeah. a little bit 15. Um, oh, I remember some stories as well now. Yeah. Keep going. And uh, I mean. I mean, I think we could say between us that we were the two quickest drivers at yeah. that point. I mean, I think it's uh, fair enough. Maybe just us thinking that. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we didn't necessarily at that time were getting along very well. But yeah, I'll, I'll let Dries ask uh, the question and then we'll... <coughs> so, we um, I'll just read... No. <laughs> so yeah... Um, there is a story well, about... Maybe, maybe Rennie can say his point of view from that period first. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, then I can say my after. <laughs> I think I mentioned before the podcast, those two years, they are, they are engraved in my brain somehow. <laughs> I don't, you know... So you have you nightmares know, of me, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, not anymore. But uh, my racing career is like... I don't know, 25 years long. And I, I barely have any memories of my 25 years. But those two years, right? <laughs> I have so many like stories and you know things which come to my mind, even though it was just two years. But uh, it's, it's crazy how such a situation 
yeah makes you makes you so many different memories but yeah i agree um lawrence and me we were both in audi we were both young drivers obviously lawrence is younger than me but we both wanted the same we both wanted to to do the next step in our in our career right um it's fair to say we were both in the gt kind of uh, program but we wanted to be either in dtm or in the lmp1 program um, this was, was yeah. clear and because we were the two let's say fastest of the gt drivers we both had the common goal and uh, we both thought it's only one of us making it and um, because we were young and stupid we we started <laughs> fighting and uh, doing politics in the background and uh, yeah anyway i i'm 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 excited about this question okay thanks <clears throat> um oh actually i I, rem I remember this one um i'll start with this one so Zolder via gt i think it was 2013 no yeah can i ask <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you Hit Rennie off the track in the chicane or not? Yes. <laughs> Technically, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I went for a move. He, you were leading, I think, and I was second? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Last chicane, and I... <laughs> yeah, I went for it, and... and yeah, Rennie told me, no, you're not. <laughs> I don't know. In the last chicane, it told her. You did you did, uh, hindsight? Now we can now we can be uh, now yeah, we can be honest. Did you see me coming or you didn't see me coming? I think I saw you coming. <laughs> but obviously, obviously there you cannot pass. I mean, we break so late, right? We break yeah. after the bridge. It's only like fifty meters. You break it, or we start turning in. And I don't know. I mean, to to gain there more than a car length in in braking performance is almost like impossible but Lawrence tried it anyway <laughs> and uh, he, he made it to my rear bumper and then spun me around so. but I didn't get a penalty yeah of course not because you're Belgian <laughs> yeah I mean it's literally my back card so I think it kind of helped how was the was debrief after that my race was over how was the debrief after normal no. <laughs> it was a normal debrief it wasn't had, actually there wasn't really anything special no I think because yeah, you guys no, were no, really like used to it. Day. <laughs> normal day in the office. Yeah. Still feel a lot of tension in the, in the over. house. Was, yeah, we I won. Was, I was parked in the gravel. I stopped the race, and uh, I had you were out. You won the race, and no penalty. Yeah, no penalty. You won the race. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Maybe that one was. I'll take the blame for that one. All right, we're getting somewhere <laughs> in this counseling uh, therapy. Uh, um. <laughs> Therapy. <laughs> I like the word therapy. <laughs> that would be the headline. Um, <laughs> then, I mean, there were a few, I guess, but uh, 24 hours of Spa 2014. There was also one, I think. At the end, you guys won that one, no? Yeah, that was, I think that was the highlight. That was kind of the summary of <laughs> of everything. No? Also, I like Betters. Betters was also quite nice. Oh, we haven't Betters. No, okay. Yeah, let's yeah it was Ryan. You, you and me and Ryle on the car. Uh, you forgot already. Wait, okay. Yeah, yeah, this I forgot. Okay. But... Um, we can talk about Spa first. Yeah, Spa. Yeah. I mean, we spoke about it with Vincent when he was on the podcast, actually, because it was also a very nice <laughs> memory for him. Uh, well, we were teammates together with uh, poor Marcus Winkelock. <laughs> uh we tried to say out everything. Um, and, well, I mean, what was the story? I think you were, it was planned that you were going to do qualifying and I was going to do the start of the race, I think. And then, maybe, I think Vincent swapped it. And, I mean, you were not, I mean, you can tell the story. You're the guest. You go first. You tell your yeah. point of view. I mean, I, I also don't know how, why, or how it happened, but uh, it was it was a thing about qualify and, and the race start, right? Yeah. Uh, it was always the same discussion. Yeah, we all we, we both wanted to do qualifying to show ourselves, and nobody wanted to do the start of the yeah. race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now thinking about it, like twenty years later or fifteen years later or ten years later, it's actually crazy what we did. Yeah, it is. But uh, we were fighting about who did the start and who did the qualify. Yeah. And um, maybe it was a way that I I I I was supposed to start. Uh, I I was supposed to do the qualify, and you were supposed to do the race start. And then somehow, 
this got changed. So all of a sudden, you did uh, you you were supposed to do qualify, and I was to supposed to do the race start. And obviously, um, when you were the German in the Belgian team, with Vincent being your manager or somebody who helped you in your career, mm -hmm. um, you know, with all the Belgian support, um, in my in my mind, obviously everything was against me, right? Uh, I said, okay, now they tried to really kill my career, kind of, because now they want to promote Ra Lawrence into that LMP1 car or DTM car. <laughs> so, yeah, it all it all started with a big fight. Um, um, I don't know how it ended up, but we ended up not talking for the whole 24 hours, for the whole weekend. You, me, Vincent, we didn't talk a word together. It was just it was just a nightmare, uh, to be honest. We we won the race, but it was a it was a freaking nightmare. And I think that was a point where everything just, yeah, went went from worse or from bad to worse. It was it was it was terrible. Yeah, Vincent, he had to come because he told us the story. He was his late last son uh, got, got birth, the yeah. thing, and then he had to drive back in the evening at eleven to sit down with <laughs> with the two of us so yeah. that we stopped, you know literally acting like kids in the hindsight 10 years later both of us um and yeah but in the end like you said i i had qualifying at uh, the start you did a really good end of the race where you fought for the victory and, and brought the car in first place uh, so in the end you know we won the race and for me it was the biggest my biggest victory that at that point i think for you it was the second one i think so uh, mm -hmm. it's funny in the end, yeah, yeah we, we ended up winning that race, but yeah, the behind the scenes, it would have been an interesting behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, maybe we should ask Netflix movie. to come by. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funny thing, or not the funny thing, the, the, because it was, it was factory supported, right? So yeah. we had uh, some factory support from Audi, the, the former uh, yeah, motorsport boss Wolfgang Ulrich mm -hmm. was, was there as well. And um, I think maybe that's also why we both try to yeah. to perform yeah. at, at the maximum. And uh, I remember after the race, I was completely dehydrated. Yeah, I couldn't I actually uh, move a finger. Uh, I couldn't sign autographs. I was completely done. And uh, I went after the race. I went to the physio truck. I got two infusions: one on the left, one on the right arm. <laughs> and um, then Dr. Dr. Ulrich came to the physio truck and came to me. And I think that was kind of my, my yeah, start into, into Audi motorsport factory racing, because I think mm. he realized at that moment, or not, maybe not didn't realize, but because as you said, I, I, uh, I had that strong last stint where, where we won the race. And I also did lots of uh, stints before because you were, you were sick or something. Yeah, I was sick um, in the morning. Probably yeah. saw, yeah, he was, he, Lawrence was sick, he couldn't drive, and I drove basically with Winky alone, and um, because probably Wolfgang only saw me instead of Lawrence, um, I think that's why in the end I, I got kind of promoted to, to the next step in my career. Uh, this, could, this could be a reason why, um, thinking about it um, in, in hindsight. But yeah, it was, it was a crazy race. Uh, luckily, <laughs> so far I have never, never experienced something like that uh, again. <laughs> are these the only two stories oh, I don't well, believe I it. mean we can go on for for an hour I think but it's I mean I already no, we, like you said as yeah. well I think since I mean I spoke about it with Jacqueline a couple of times I mean since since a lot of years now I'm already when you think back of it it was like yeah I mean now we're a lot older and smarter and and I honestly have and I can tell you this almost one of the most respect and any other drivers to you uh, because of what you, you what you're able Thank to you. to do but yeah like you said back then we were young and we both wanted the same the same thing and in hindsight as well I think about you were older than me you were one step in front of me I just had to you know uh, yeah. and anyway I had to wait the next step after you um, which I didn't get because they stopped everything. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we really, I mean, there were races where, and I would never now do this again, but I remember that I was literally thinking from how can I, how can I upset Rene? Like, I'm, I'm not going to talk to him. I'm not going to say hi or bye. And then maybe this will upset him. 
I mean, I'm sure you were doing similar things as well. I remember testing and solder. I cannot remember. <laughs> I cannot remember, but for sure, but for sure, there were some uh, uh, some games, mind games played for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I can't absolutely. remember that. I, I, Fucking I, hell. I, I thought about it on purpose, but there were big, big mind games for sure going on. Um, <laughs> but I've, I've never done. I, I think I've never done did anything stupid in terms of. Uh, me getting out of the car, you jumping in and changing the brake by no, or no, no, no. net spotting the tires or something like this would be stupid. No, in the end, we, will, we, we still want to win that... the races together. Like, we didn't play yeah. any dirty games, but it was like, yeah, like, like, like you were doing single seaters against each other almost, like, you know, uh, everybody for yeah, himself. Yeah. And in hindsight, if you think about it, it was just stupid. And now I'm actually yeah. completely... I've learned about that because I'm now completely the contrary. I would never... I would never treat my teammates on the car in, in, in a bad way and, and always try and make it work. Because sometimes, you know, you, you have to work with a lot of people in the same car, but you cannot always have the same mindset or be the best friends. I mean, that's just how the world works. I, have a very <laughs> I was just thinking about something mm -hmm. concerning you have this, this history. Now you are um, in a relationship. Um, no, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> Freddy, Fervish, he is the best guy in this. We, <laughs> if he doesn't like you, like you guys had back then, or you you guys couldn't get along, or you were fighting for the same thing, Freddy is just there mm -hmm. was we were racing in Kielami. I'm not gonna say the guy who, who we said it to. Um, um, now you can do it. No, yeah, well. <laughs> and um, <laughs> he's, <laughs> they couldn't get along. I was not on their car, but they couldn't get along the whole weekend, and they were fighting. Because he wanted to change the seat the whole time, and then Freddy didn't know about it. Then he just arrived, and he was like, "What? For and you know, like Freddy is like, "Fuck! What is this? What are you doing?" And then on the way back home, on uh, to the hotel, he just said to the guy, and they were just driving. I said, "You know what? You're really a fucking idiot. I don't like you." <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's and honest. then he, it was done immediately. He was like, "Really? <laughs> what did I do?" He said, "You're just really an asshole." <laughs> And then they didn't <laughs> talk to each other anymore. <laughs> it was clear. Uh, well, we ha we had that well, once as well. Forward. I remember that in Bathurst. Yeah. Exactly, that's what I mean. We we were like screaming at each other and telling us. Uh, ah, ba I thought you were speaking about Baku. Yeah, Bathurst. Bathurst, yeah, yeah. And Rahel, poor Rahel. But why was, was this like, again? Was Qualifying. I have no idea. Ah, no, I remember. Probably because. You uh, oh, yeah, you remember? Yeah. yeah, yeah. My memory is bad, but sometimes it comes back. But um, you were upset with me because, and I generally think that it wasn't the case, but that I went to the engineer behind your back to try and get something changed in my favor, mm -hmm. which I, I generally don't yeah, think was the case in that one. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, there was something. And then you were I really angry, I, I remember. I thought you tried, yeah, it was either about tires or setup, I think yeah. you, I think that I thought <laughs> that you tried, <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody knows it was true, but uh, obviously if you have those uh, mind games already played before in our our history, then you, you think the worst about the, exactly, the your, your yeah. teammate, actually. And I think it's just yeah. also a waste of energy. If you, yeah. it would what we what we did now. That's yeah, why now sure. I wouldn't even start with it. I would just be like, okay, oh fuck off, do whatever you want, and then do my <laughs> own thing. But yeah, I, I mean, mean, you I learn a bit if you're young. I uh, well, once you had a, you call. I remember you calling me and saying, I remember you have this had this experience with Rin in the past. How should I deal with it?" Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. No, no, no. With someone else. <laughs> Uh, I had it uh, once or twice, okay. but I I am can I, I am not who? doing this. Can I say this. who? Can I say who? <laughs> 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 no. really likes this gossip part of the, <laughs> of the podcast. <laughs> I, because I had it two times. I, I had it once with Kelvin. I had this thing. I know I had once with Mirko in yeah. the, in in America because he changed the seat uh, the whole time, like uh, with Fred. And um, yeah, but I never had this mental thing. I mean. Once or twice, I I drove into his car in, in free practice, but I didn't do it. I actually one time they really didn't do it on purpose. But this is was not really mind games. It was just like fuck you, get out of my way, like like really just serious. <laughs> but at the end we got along very well because we. I think what you guys at the end didn't do, what I did, 
<clears throat> or what we did, we also were fighting for uh, me and Calvin for this DTM uh, seat uh, or the LMDH seat that was back then at Audi available mm. or coming up. Um, we were fighting as well for this and there were we didn't get along, we didn't talk a lot, but at the end we, we said, well, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah. And we understood and we managed to work together really well. <clears throat> and it was a very good, I mean, it worked out really well because we were both quite a, quite good and we managed to win a lot of races together, which I think if you guys did, which you did, but I mean, I'm sure way. if we would work together now, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, <coughs> if you would work together now that we would work together uh, pretty well, I think, because we both yeah, yeah. matured and learned from the past. And I think we would generally be... Yeah. Who's doing qualifying? Together. I honestly, I don't care about qualifying <laughs> anymore. I mean, oh, oh really? No, I, I, prefer, I even prefer to focus on the race instead of, especially in the championship I'm doing yeah. now. It's not about qualifying. It's about the race pace. No, I agree. I, I like to work with, with drivers who are also putting a lot of work into, into the project. Like, mm. uh, you know, I think we would be a good, good addition to, to each other. Who knows? Uh, yeah. Reunited. I mean, you know, I'm I'm 37, so I don't have too many years ahead of me. Uh, how long you still want to race? If you, I mean, you cannot say, but you know, as long as I feel good in the car yeah. um, and I'm fast. So, as long as I enjoy everything, the whole the whole racing circus. It's not only the you know. I think I will always enjoy enjoy driving. But at one point, I think the traveling and, and yeah. all the the side effect of racing, yeah. which you don't see as a as a fan, no. um, sitting on your desktop, uh, on your desk at home, doing all the administrative uh, work, uh, which is a lot, yeah. especially if you work for different manufacturers or two different manufacturers, different teams, um, everybody wants something, there are a couple of emails every day. Um, and stuff like that. So as long as I still enjoy it, I will continue. And then once there's a time, I think you can, you, you will feel it. Yeah. It's like going on toilet. You feel it when you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it comes that way. <laughs> I had this this morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily I went because I thought it was a small fart, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's going to um, be your highlight video for good. the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Thanks, you, <laughs> you your work I mean your work besides racing and I mean I think I'm it's right to say that you do have a management company right or like you do it together with your yeah. manager and you started a company together yeah, yeah. how's yeah, that going is, uh, when this was like five years ago or six years ago um, we started uh, full promotion together we basically focus on on supporting and managing young drivers in their in their careers um that's going quite well i have to say even though my my job in that company is quite limited at actually right now because my my manager dennis who i'm having the company with he's mainly focusing on the on the negotiations and the contractual part of of the of the of the racing career of the drivers and i'm doing more the the sportive side so let's say uh, the drivers have questions needs uh, they need support during the weekend. Um, that's basically my part, my part of, okay. of the of the company, um, and I try to teach them how to attack a weekend. And I I will analyze the driver, what kind of driver they are, and what they need to to perform at its best. But uh, because we at the moment we we have Sheldon and Kelvin in our company, um, because they're both already professionals and uh, very good drivers. Uh, they don't need a lot of my support at all. So yeah. my role in that company right now is actually quite limited. Um, but for sure, there will be times when we get uh, yeah young drivers which which need which need way more support from my side. So then I will come into into play way more. So, so how many drivers always, are you currently managing or supporting? At at, at the moment, we only have Kelvin and Sheldon. Yeah. Um, we have some drivers which are like on the on the waiting list and mm. uh, wanna wanna wanting to join, but for us, it's more about quality than quantity. Sure. Because time is already so limited that it's for us difficult to yeah, to almost support the drivers, hundred percent. If we have more drivers, then something will be sacrificed, and yeah. we don't wanna 
you know, we won't, but we don't do half things. Either we do it full or we, we leave it. Um, and that's why I say, I think in the future, we will have probably again, more drivers joining, but uh, at, the, at the moment we don't have the capacity. Um, we have like a total four, we have four guys, people working for us already, um, but it's, it's, it's still not enough. And um, yeah, we need just more time and capacity and sure. then we can, we can get more young drivers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> One last, uh, last thing in the podcast. Do you have a question for Dries or myself? Seriously, not seriously, gossip, a story. Try and let our, our guests have the last, the last word. What do you want to bring in? Actually, Dries, I don't know Dries actually so much, right? No? I mean, I know Dries, but I haven't, I haven't spent so much time with Dries, right? No, um, it's true, actually. We, we, we saw... <clears throat> We saw each other lots of times on the tracks, but I've never really spent uh, lots of time with him in a team. I heard I heard a lot of stories, about <laughs> oh, yeah. a lot of stories more than about Lawrence recently. Um, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, um, I don't know what what kind of question do I have to you. Hmm. Lawrence, maybe no. That's that's mean. No, no I cannot. <laughs> no, no, you, you can go. And mean is fine. I'm, I'll survive. No, I was. Yeah, let's go with the mean one. Go, go ahead. <laughs> it's it's actually about racing. It's um it's about last year. Yeah. In uh, in, in DTM. I mean. Obviously, I saw that. Uh, how can I say that you didn't really like the championship and and stuff like that? But uh, what do you think was the reason why you were not performing on on that level where you normally are? Because normally you are always like, you know, on top. You are always one of the fastest in LMDH, in mm. in 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 WEC, in in IMSA, everywhere. But <clears> last year in, in GT3 in, in DTM. Um, Somehow this wasn't the case. What do you think the reason for that was? Um, I mean, it's a good question and I don't have a, a hundred percent answer on it. I think it was a mix of, of a lot of stuff in hindsight. It was the first thing, which was not easy was I knew it was a one year thing because I knew LMDH was, was coming after. Mm -hmm. Um, and I obviously wanted to do well, but there was not a lot of time, you know, to, to adapt or, or to work. And it started out pretty well. I think in the beginning of the year, we had just a bad BUP and we were bad in qualifying, but the races went well. And then it somehow got into a, a negative downwards spiral. And yeah, I'm, I don't want to try everything out there, but I was, I was getting along well with, uh, with, with my engineer and, and, and with the mechanics, but mm -hmm. you know, the team wasn't, let's say the best memories I had. And I always, I'm, I'm a kind of driver where, where I need to feel well or the, where I am. Um, and I think just in hindsight, I, it was a tough year and not only on track, also off the track, just everything kind of got together. But which in the end is I'm, I'm the one to take the, the blame for, let's say the blame is my responsibility. Um, why exactly those things happened? Don't have a hundred percent answer on it. But the funny thing is I actually, and this is not just a political uh, PR bullshit answer is I, I really learned a lot out of it um, mm -hmm. because it was tough. And it took me some time to, to understand, but it also opened up, you know, the, 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 the wounds and, and the areas we'd see from, yeah, actually in hindsight, I wasn't doing this very well. I, I should be better at that. And, and also my, my mindset on, on, on some kind of things and my attitude, maybe, um, you know, I, I, I knew I didn't forgot how to drive a car. Um, but it's just, and, no. and very often it's, it's, it's having the right mindset, the right attitude, the right environment. Um, and 
yeah, I think it just was a big mix of 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 a bit of everything and. And but it, it wasn't because you didn't uh, you, you didn't put the work in. You you still put the work in and try to to analyze data and stuff like that. So it was not because you were lazy. No, no, no. I I, I really I really did try and put the work in. Um, I did, but it just okay. yeah. Some people I had I heard of. Uh, oh, you're doing LMDH next year. You don't really care. Uh, just writing mm -hmm. the season off. No, that was not the case at all. Um, and yeah, for sure. And I could have done. Uh, things different than maybe say let's say work different or 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 whatever you want to call it but um yeah i mean uh, funny enough i'm I'm happy that year happened because i think for me personally this year was a, so far a very good year and and it's also thanks to to last year um because i was able to okay to improve myself as well and uh, i i try and see if yeah, maybe i needed it maybe i needed it for a bit of a you know, slap in the face, wake up, get your shit yeah, together. I think, <laughs> I think the hard times make you stronger, right? And better. Yeah, for it's, sure. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's also for, for me, I mean, uh, as you said, I tried so many years in the past to become a factory driver in mm. Porsche, in Audi. I did like four or five shootouts in Audi and BMW. I never got promoted to, to DTM, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I knew that I am capable of doing it, but um, I think I learned so much in those difficult times that I was, I was basically ready when the opportunity came yeah. that I was ready to perform at its best because I had so much tough years and I prepared so, so well in the background for, for when the opportunity comes. So yeah, I think that sometimes a, a tough year is actually quite helpful yeah, uh, it is. to, to grow as a driver and to grow as a person. You always have these years in every career and you will always have tough years and good years. And it's, I think it's the way you, you deal with it and, 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 and try to go from, from there on that you know, uh, brings you back successful years or you stay in the, in the tough years, I guess. But Do you want to say another uh, quote, like quote? a life quote? No, I had all of them. Oh, okay. Yes, please. <coughs> yes. It's, it's, no. uh, let's, uh, let's hear a quote from, from Dries. It's, it's, like, it's, it's a therapy. Every time right? I want to say something, it's like, all right, here we go. Hold your tits. No. Um, <laughs> <coughs> well, what's your life quote? No, it's not a life quote. It's just that... Um, want to play golf? <laughs> um... Well, that's good to lose sometimes because uh, you don't get, you don't really learn a lot when you win. To be honest, you learn a bit, well, but you yeah. learn more when you lose. That's true. So it's it's good to lose. I, I mean, you can you getting. Yeah, there is a code. There is a code for it, but I have no clue how it goes. <laughs> but it's just better to lose <laughs> sometimes. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably. It's just better. I mean, yeah. Uh, because if you win, Chris, I mean, it's just uh, how I yeah. Dries, how, how, is, how is Lawrence as a brother? Uh, well, you know, we are actually a bit different. was he when you were kids? When you were kids? When you were kids? Ah, we were kids. Uh, prof. Actually, we played a lot together when we were yeah. younger. You always, we did like this, these races together with like a step or thing, and you always pushed me off. I was already winning, but then you pushed me. What? Yeah, I was seven years older. He was seven so. years older than me, so I was leading, and then he just pushed me somewhere off uh, against uh, in the dirt or in the grass, whatever. And we always sure. had this this thing to fight, uh, to, to 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 fight, to to race. We never really fought, I think. Yeah. No. No, actually, it's quite okay, and it's getting. I mean, it got better. Uh, I mean, he had a time where you lived in Germany, it was a bit yeah. uh, diff more difficult with contact and stuff. But now that you live back in Belgium, it's um, well, it's good. And actually, yeah, we know that we are both different in, in many ways. A little bit. Um, which for some things are nice and for some things, uh, I sometimes think, what a fucking idiot. But <laughs> it, uh, I think it's for everyone. <laughs> like at the Nuruk ring sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Prefer, uh, that, was a, that was a pretty <coughs> good example of our childhood, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As soon as you got in, my, my, my voice is gone. <coughs> Too much drinking last night? Or? No, it's not that. Yeah, I know why. I know why it reads. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. The 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 Nurburgring thing uh, was a childhood. Um, right. All the, the racing we did against each other and 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 making sure I was quicker or you were quicker. That was for sure hundred um, percent part. It was also part of the lessons from. Uh, but at the end, it was your mistake. So if I I don't have anything to blame. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting getting uh, to 
to some uh, end here in the in our therapy. I can yeah. <laughs> we'll feel the, the we'll f- is, uh, all it's all out. I feel very out. happy today. Yeah. <laughs> the tension is rising. No, no, all good. No, but um, thank you for taking the time, Rene. Yes, uh, thanks a lot. I think thank it was a too. very interesting episode with some cool stories. I hope everybody will enjoy it. Uh, I was actually looking forward to this one because, like you said, we had some, you know, not not a lot of people, I think, knew that we were, I mean, some people knew, but that we were, I mean, yeah. not, not rivals, fight, fighting rivals. or uh, rivals, maybe is the best word. Yeah. So it's yeah, a, back in the days, I, c- I think it's fair to say that we, we hated each other quite a lot. So, uh, hate is a big I word. Re- do you but... remember? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it actually it, it actually continued, right? Uh, I Did just it? remember our test in uh, where was it? Uh, was it Nieres? No, it was Nieres with with Sebastian Loeb racing. Ah, yeah, yeah with the wall. two test. Yeah. Uy, 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 uy. <laughs> what happened there? We, we both tried. We both tried to get a to get a seat at uh, Sebastian Loeb racing. Yeah. For Le Mans 2014, because yes. we both wanted to do uh, Le Mans 2014, yeah, to show ourselves to Audi, exactly, to become factory driver in the next year. <laughs> and we both, yeah. we both wanted to pay. We both paid money, right? Uh, we wanted to pay money, and I said, "You pay more than me." No, you pay more than me. And we both <laughs> got crazy about who, how much the others paid, and blah blah blah. It well, that's why crazy. I didn't get anyway. to drive in him because I didn't. I never was. No, no, seriously, I was. He told me I didn't have to pay. But then in the end, he threw me ah. out after the test for what was the guy? Charus, who obviously paid. Uh, yeah, well, I crashed. I, I, I crashed at the test when then, <laughs> and then he said, "There the, we go." The <laughs> on cold tires, third corner. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then yeah, he threw me out. This idiot. What was he called? Dominique. Sebastian Loeb. Heinz. Ah. Heinz, the team manager. Yeah. Dominique. Never spoke to him again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were we were both. It was coincident, coincidental, I think. No, that we were both ending there yeah, at maybe, the same yeah. same thing. Can you, can you imagine both of us being in the Le Mans car? <laughs> oh, this would have been so bad. <laughs> yeah. So I we had to postpone my. So what? Yeah, we would have pushed every lap, like qualify in the in the race, just to have the better average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Driving. Be probably in, in <laughs> hindsight, it would have been the best that we didn't end up driving there together. The car would have not finished. Yeah. <laughs> no. Probably not. No, I ended up doing it a year later then, with on the Ligier uh, with uh, Kevin yeah. on the Oak Racing yeah. car. And I was in the P1. Yeah. For yeah. Me, <laughs> for me, it uh, it turned out to be good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for you as well now. You are now yeah. in top class in, in WC. So for you, I, I think you're in, in a very good spot right now. Yeah. Yeah. No way. That's funny how it goes. Only yeah, if you look back. It was. Yeah, it's crazy. Cool years and times, times, time is flying. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they have to enjoy it. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, I think yeah. we need to uh, to do a second second episode. There's so much, so many more stories. Yeah, yeah we can. Remember. Yeah, we do part two. <laughs> <laughs> See the end of the Maybe about next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean about next year? No, no. <laughs> Cut. Maybe end Cut. of the next year. Maybe we can talk. We can talk more stories. I mean, it would be nice. Yeah. It would be fun. It would mean some yeah. good, good stuff that happened, I guess. Yep. We'll see. Okay so, go. I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to jump on yep. my bike. Thank Greece you. is going to go bedding bed, I think. No, I have to help my dad at the warehouse. Okay. I have to lift some boxes. Your dad. He hasn't asked me yet. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> then you know who's the favorite <laughs> son. Eh? He knows that you're <laughs> bike. Yeah, well, I'm only home for two days, so I hope he doesn't <laughs> call. But, uh, What's next for you? Uh, Macau next week. Ah, yeah, true. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, you, 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 you. Yeah. big one. Yeah, <laughs> big one. It's a it's a tough uh, tough year this year, right? It's lots of uh, a lot of good cars. cars right? Yeah, yeah, it's a very yeah. strong entry field. I'm very curious. I went on the sim yesterday at uh, Mantai. And you crashed? No, I. Uh, to be honest, I was impressed by myself. I was. I was, yeah, I was really good. <laughs> I was impressed by myself. And I'm normally not the greatest on the sim, the but <laughs> yeah, I was even quicker than the sim racer who was doing the reference. Can you imagine? Who was he? Jean-Louis from, uh, from uh, Downtown or what? Van der Heide or something? Never heard of him. Apparently he's quite good. Did you say? But, or maybe not because I didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was his first day at the office. No, no. I'm new, so... Uh, <laughs> 
Have you been in uh, Macau, Lawrence? Me, yeah, a couple <laughs> times. Just Google YouTube. You'll <laughs> you'll see my CV in Macau. <laughs> uh, hey, the, the races I, I, I finished, I was on the podium every time. Yeah, the ones you didn't finish, you uh, you hit your balls. Or what was it? Your <laughs> yeah, one time. <laughs> <laughs> I love the model car of you, uh, upside down. That's yeah, the best it's, model it's, car thing. Standing uh, there. Actually, my uh, my the, my trophy room. The trophy is also upside down on the cabinet. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it's the best model car I've ever done. Is yeah. it a, a one piece only, or is it actually got produced like that? Uh, they made a couple, of them, but somebody told me that it's worth quite a bit of money. Now, I mean, what quite a bit of money? A couple of hundred euros, I think, for the small one. I will take it home then. Yeah. I only have one. No, I have two. I think maybe keep one. So yeah, we'll see. That's going to be the last race of the the year, holidays, and then testing, and then yeah, the year starts again. So okay. Daytona again. Yep. You? You have any more races? No. No, no, no. I'm done. I had enough races this year. Yeah, I can imagine. With, with Formula E and uh, DTM. Yeah. So I've got uh, two months of easy life now, just testing and yeah. other stuff. And then, what do you yeah, do during the day? New season stuff. <laughs> I'm I'm a family bo uh, family uh, man now. Um, oh, taking care, care of kids, kids and... and bringing them to school, to to their activities. Are Building a house right do? now. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have lots of things to do. I'm bored yeah. as fuck. You should make some kids, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm gonna jump on my bike. Uh, Thank you for the time. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you in Daytona, maybe? Somewhere. Somewhere Daytona in the world. Probably, yeah. yeah. See, I don't know if I'm doing Daytona yet, but we'll see. Me either. Hopefully. Okay, Doki. Say Thank hi to guys. the family. Pleasure. Thanks a lot, Rene. Ciao, see ciao. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.